going to then ask um, of you to please introduce yourselves and the team that is with you today for education. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Good afternoon the chairperson, uh, Fallen Christians, a member of this committee. Must the start of this meeting. Regan Allen. Good afternoon, chairperson. Can you post now? It's out at two o'clock. If you can switch off your mic, please. Continue, member Brancais. Goedemiddag, voorzitter en goedemiddag alle members. Galeo Brancais. Good day, uh, members. Khalid Sayed. Is that all our members? Thank you. Um, Minister, over to you and then to the HOD. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chairperson, and good afternoon to you and the members. It's Debbie Schaefer, Provincial Minister of Education. Good afternoon, Mrs. Porter and members, uh, Brent Walters, HOD for Education. And I am accompanied today by uh, the DDGs, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Eli, Mr. Abrams, and Mr. Mohammed, and also Chief Director of Finance, Ms. Falkman. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Um, on that note, HOD, then we will continue. I also would want to welcome our procedural officer, um, Wasima Hassan Musa, and we have a co-procedural officer this afternoon, Wasim Matthews, and then I want to welcome Mary Ann Burgess, who is the assistant procedural officer, and then also Mr. Siraj Hassam, who is assisting us in regard to the technology that we might require. Now, members, as indicated, we are deliberating today on the Western Cape Adjustment Appropriation Bill 2021 for vote five, education. I'm going to ask to please remain muted and also to switch off your cameras. But if you are speaking, then please you may um, um, switch on your cameras. I also want to welcome those members of the public that are in this meeting this afternoon as we are aware that this is also a public hearing. And um, members, when you need to give input or um, pose a question or um, want to ri rise on a point of order, please use the raise your hand function. Otherwise, please just indicate to the procedural officer that you want um, to speak. Now, in regard to the appropriation, Minister, I'm going to give an opportunity to you as well as the HOD, just in terms of opening remarks in regard to um, this appropriation, and then thereafter we will deal with the content of this appropriation. Thank you very much. Over to you. Thank you very much, um, Chairperson. Um, I will be extremely brief. The detail we'll be um, going into with our officials who've prepared for this presentation. Um, but I just uh, want to say that for the first time, I think, well, certainly since I've been appointed, we welcome the fact that uh, money has been given to us by National Treasury for the wage negotiations, which are, as you know, done nationally and for which we have uh, over the years having to compensate for. So we, we're very happy about that. Um, that's That together with the Presidential Employment Initiative are really the two big budget items that have been added this year. Uh, the Presidential Employment Initiative, obviously we um, ha are happy to have these uh, young people in our schools. We are very happy that young people are being given employment. Um, the problem is that it doesn't though, add to our baseline budget. So we are concerned about the sustainability thereof, uh, as well as the fact that, you know, that it's essentially removing control from the Provincial Education Department as to how we use that money. But we certainly are happy Happy to have it, and those really are the main items. Uh, but I would like to hand over to my HOD for the rest of the presentation. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Minister and Chairperson and committee members. I think uh, today we're presenting a net adjustment of 928,386 million. And as Minister indicated, uh, obviously we are grateful for 
uh, the additional funding that we have been given, obviously they come with uh, lots of responsibility and some constraints. Uh, as Minister mentioned, it consists of a few main elements. I think the, the major one being the 556 million been given for the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. Then the 490 million we've been given for the servicing of the wage agreement. And then there are some pluses and minuses in relation to infrastructure. Uh, we've been given some uh, rollover money and in that in that regard for infrastructure, we're replanning and repackaging a maintenance program to ensure we have more value for money. Uh, and then obviously there's some deferred expenditure and in infrastructure due to some contractual difficulties. And then maybe to also say some of the rollovers also consist of uh, MST grant from a previous year and NSNP uh, funding from last year, which was then rolled over and brought back into this budget. The net effect of all those pluses and minuses and a few environments chairperson is an amount of 928.386 uh, million. And I uh, will be presenting to the committee this afternoon and uh, I think we'll open up for any questions that there may be in relation to these amounts. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Minister, and thank you very much, um, HOD. Now, um, members, our vote then starts um, in regard to the blue book that we all have received. Um, starts on page 73 up until including the annexures up until page 99. Now, in regard to that, I'm going to table to you now pages 73 up until page 86, excluding the annexures. If you want to pose a question on the annexures, please indicate so. But I'm tabling that um, that uh, uh, um, pages for you. So I'm taking your questions. No? Doesn't seem so. Members, are you here? Are you not hearing me? Yes, Jefferson, my hand is up. I see your hand now, so I note you. Please continue. Thank you, Jefferson. Chair, um, I just want to ask a general question, um, if I'm allowed. I just wanted to know what the impact of the um, money that is coming through the Presidential um, Youth Employment Stimulus Initiative, what impact does um, that money arriving so late every year have on the planning in the, the department? And has that added value to the department's core objectives? Um, also in regard to that question, just latching on, um, we have, I want to say three months in um, nearing the end of the financial year. Are we able to spend that money? Member Christians? Uh, Chair, I, I think mine is, is, is exactly the same. I, 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 um, if I remember correctly, we received the money very late uh, in the previous financial year. Uh, I almost think that uh, uh, Minister Safer said what, it was a fiscal dumping in the previous financial year because the money arrived so late. Uh, and of course, not all of that uh, money could be utilized. Um, so I just want to know uh, with the amount, I know it's late, but with an amount of more than 500 million for the presidential youth employment, will all of that money be utilized um, in this financial year? Uh, that is my question. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Minister HOD. That is the round for your response. Thank, Thank you, Chairperson. I'll start. Okay. Go ahead, Minister. Um, Thank you. I just want to um, comment on the general point about the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative and then um, SG and, and my colleagues can uh, answer the more specifics about whether we can spend it or not. But yes, it is a concern that we get it so late. And the, the, the big, bigger concern is that we, we got it last time also very late. And it really most of the money was spent over the holiday period when the schools are closed. So it is, sorry, I haven't turned my camera on. It is concerning um, 
in that regard because it makes it, it it does make it very difficult first of all to, to plan and then to spend it in time and then of course we get slammed if we don't spend it so that is a concern but the bigger concern is that it, it hasn't been a continuation of the previous year so we had a number of learners who are uh, young people who came to work in our school uh, and they were very useful by all accounts um, but the problem is then come april and they are then you know without a job anymore and it's taken the rest of this year to get to the point of giving us additional funding for this to continue so it's very regrettable that we've had this huge break in in service to the schools from this program um, we are hoping, and um, Ms. Feltman can maybe add to, to this, I know she's had engagements on it, that it might continue now more sustainably going forward. Um, but as I say, it does remove the, the control of the budget from us as to where we need it the most. Um, so I think if I can ask SG to take it further on, on the rest of the question. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Minister. I think you, you covered it just in terms of the impacts and so on. Obviously, we received the money very late. But I think the one silver lining this year is that uh, there has been indication that there is some level of carry through um, into the next year. And it's also about you know the amount of work that we have to engage in to employ the 20,000 odd uh, young people who benefit from this program. Uh, the processes that we have to engage in and the time frames that have been given were really very difficult to achieve. But I think we did achieve that. I will ask Ms. Feltman perhaps to talk to the detail and to the fact that there is a promise of uh, some carry through. Uh, into the new financial year. Uh, Anna, if I could ask you to just add, please. Thank you. Thank you, SG. Um, uh, Chairperson and members, um, as SG and Minister alluded, um, the money uh, came now with the adjustment budget. The, the cohort has already been absorbed and appointed in schools, effective 1 November. Um, a difference from the previous round on phase one, obviously um, the department has gone through an extensive learning curve during the first phase. Um, so <clears throat> what we find this time, we are um, the, they have been appointed in the schools earlier than the previous project for once. Um, it's a month earlier than the previous time. It provides now sufficient time in terms of orientation for these um, assistance. Um, in preparation for the 2022 academic year. So the month of November was spent um, intensely on the orientation and um, settling in in the school environment. Um, they are also receiving all the online training modules that they will now complete during the December period um, to um, enable them to be ready for effective utilization from the January um, school calendar start. Um, so there's, there is some synergy in the timing of the appointment in terms of the year. Uh, secondly, um, it is a lot of money. Um, and for that reason, we have already in terms of our planning processes um, aligned ourselves to such a degree that the project will be able to extend beyond the financial year, which is 31st March. So we've been in close um, collaboration with the provincial treasury from the onset. Um, uh, we are um, looking at the region of 20,000 assistance in our school environment um, uh, that will be employed. And we are hoping to maintain this for the full academic year of 2022 um, with the funding that we currently have, as well as the funding um, it's coupled from the phase one funding that wasn't spent that the committee has referred to, um, as well as funding from this phase two that will extend into the next um, financial year, um, which will make the project sustainable and, and provide the full benefits to the schools as well as the assistance over the full duration of the academic year. And then there is um, um, advanced uh, conversations already on the national sphere for the sector. Um, although we don't have confirmation yet, we are anticipating and hoping that this would become a uh, intervention over the entire MTF. Um, uh, and we expect to receive uh, more clarity on that by the end of the, the financial year. But for the Western Cape, we are already geared and we are um, uh, uh, arranging the program such that we would have that benefit in our schools for the 2022 academic year as a minimum. Thank you, Chairperson.
Thank you very much for that responses. Um, members Christians and Brunkes, I know too, respectively. Thank you, Chair Chairperson. Just a, a follow up on that question. Um, now that you know the, the 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 problem is, and I heard uh, Mrs. Faltzman uh, uh, spoke to it over the the uh, holiday uh, period. Um, these uh, teaching uh, uh, these assistants uh, are being employed from the first of November, so they will do modules over the December period. Um, is is the, those is those mon modules? Uh, that they must do is that monitored and, um, you know, um, because you also want, of course, you know, uh, them to add value uh, when they're at the school. So are they monitored on these modules and what if they do not do or, um, you know, complete these modules, what happens then? Because um, you also want to make sure that uh, because they are paid from the 1st of November, that December they also put in some work in order to be uh, suitably prepared uh, for next year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Member Brankais. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair to the Department, um, uh, the allocated uh, monies for, for educational infrastructure. Um, I know that the, 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 the queue is very, very long. Uh, in terms of school that is waiting for 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 assistance to 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 upgrade their their, their fencing uh, around the schools uh, in terms of their security situations. So um, uh, those uh, allocations uh, for educational infrastructures uh, to the schools, uh, how much priority will be given um, to the to the to the uh, special uh, fencing um, uh, for for the schools? Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you. Member Sayed. Chair, thank you very much. I think Member Branca has covered me on the issue of fencing. Uh, you're you're quite that's in that's sync my, now. Yeah, that's my favourite topic. But uh, Chair, just on the issue of learner transport, I just wanted to get the sense with all these changes uh, taking place, some of the shifting of funds, um, those uh, learner transport interventions that were put in place um, this year, uh, or, or that have put, or that have been put in place in the past few months, on the basis of certain things that have happened, some emergencies. I take, for example, the Muscle Bay case into account. Um, will those learner uh, transport interventions continue or will things go back to normal? I just wanted to get a sense. Thank you. I mean, do we have sufficient funding for them to continue? Uh, as the provision funds been allocated? Thank you. Thank you very much. Minister HOD, that's this round. Thank you. Thank yes, you very yeah. much. Uh, Thank you. No, I'm saying SC, would you please take it? Thanks. Sure, sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working. SG, please continue. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, I just want, uh, uh, maybe I can just ask in um, relation to the question, uh, questions on infrastructure and learner transport, if um, Mr. Mr. Abrams could perhaps just uh, tackle those questions, those two questions. And then on the question on the uh, modules for the training, if I can ask Ms. Feltman to perhaps just answer those. Maybe we can start with Mr. Abrams and then uh, we can move to Ms. Feltman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Chair and Honourable Members, uh, colleagues. On the question of fencing, fencing, of course, um, has a, a ring fenced budget in the context of our provincial priorities. We've allocated budget to um, delivering new. Um, fencing at 30 schools a year. We're accelerating on that plan. And then in addition to that, because of this, you know, additional concerns around vandalism and so forth, we've put monies um, to do, I would say repair, it's quite significant repair. It's not, it's not patching a hole in the fence. And so uh, to Member Brunke's comment, that is a long list. I think the expectation is for upgrades of existing fences 
Um, we've covered our backlogs of schools without offense, notwithstanding there are some vandalism, but the, the increasing demand now is for the caliber of the fencing, the high, what we call the high security um, perimeter fencing. It's the technology that, that is now in demand. So we will put more money to that uh, because those are obviously more expensive fences. So it's definitely a priority um, for us in the context of our provincial safety uh, program, but also we recognize that uh, we do have to invest in the newer technologies that's available. So we, we, we definitely, you know, incorporating that in our, what we call our replanning, replanning agenda. Um, to member said, um, we have not changed the arrangements that we've put in place for learner transport. We carry that through into the new academic year. Um, and so for the rest of this financial year, the assurances to the transport operators um, who have um, who we've worked with to ensure that learners continue to be transported under these circumstances. We've made no change to some function. So at the minimum through the first quarter, we will continue uh, first academic quarter, uh, our last financial year quarter, we will carry the arrangements we've had in 2021. Thank you. Um, thank you, Chairperson. In response to the question with regard to the training modules, um, yes, on, uh, firstly, um, the assistance has been provided with um, data so they will be able to access the modules as a, as, as a first point. And then secondly, all the modules are monitored. They are, um, uh, they've got in, built-in um, evaluation um, monitoring tools, um, which first require an assessment modules for, for the required standard and then um, there is also monitoring in terms of completing and ensuring that all candidates um, required to complete a, a specific model does complete it. So it is compulsory and it is being monitored to give assurance. Thank you. Is, is that it? All the questions been answered? Um, Ishi, I just want to check with you in regards to your pro uh, the sub program 2.1 in regard to I'm um, following up on members say it that um, learner transport scheme um, allocation that has been shifted. What what districts is this? If I may ask like that. What districts were affected or is it all? Member Brinkers, is your hand raised? Oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Is she? Um, if I could perhaps ask Erna to uh, try and answer that question, uh, just in terms of the funding, 2.1. The district was, is it all districts with this particular district? Sure, thank you, SG. Um, yes, it would be all districts um, because it um, affects the total um, approach in terms of invoicing and all schools, all routes were affected in terms of the number of learners transported um, during the COVID period. So it's across the board, um, all districts, all routes. Thank you, Ms. Feldman. Um, Member Brunkeis? Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Uh, Chair, yes, uh, today is the um, uh, is it possible that I can be provided or if the committee can be provided uh, with a, a list of schools that need uh, um, uh, upgrading to the to the fencing or to the security uh, fencing structures? Is it uh, possible if we can be provided with a list of schools? Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We can ask that in our um communication to the department after our um, de deliberations with them. So that we can ask that in writing. That's OK. Um, members, I'm going to move on then. Um, and I'm, I'm getting to the annexures, pages 86 to 99, if there's any questions in regard to that. Not on us. I, I just want to ask SG in regard to the um, schedule of infrastructure and the um, provision made of um, completing the projects. There are some projects indicated for completion at the end of March, so it's at the end of the financial year next year. 
are we um, sort of en route to be completed by then? Jefferson infrastructure, Mr. Abrams will uh, indicate uh, just in terms of how far we are in relation to uh, the completion. Completion, but I think we we know with infrastructure uh, that we when we're building and as we're doing things, it depends on the supply and demand. Uh, you know when materials are delivered and so on. But I'll leave that to Mr. Abrams to indicate. Mr. Abrams, with you. Yeah, thanks, SG. Thanks, uh, Chairperson. I think I would build on that answer. I'm, I'm literally with the Department of Public Works today, our, our implementing agent, just double checking on the two risks that I think would impact on, on that question. One is the um, availability of materials over the next few, few months, um, changes in legislation around the, the sourcing of those, those materials. Um, there isn't expected to be a short term impact. And so the projects that have been commissioned to be delivered this year and be completed by March, those projects are on track. The other one is we've seen uh, some significant difficulties with our contractor performance. Um, the market, the built environment is such that we've seen even big operators um, run into uh, business trouble um, in, in, in as, a, as a consequence of COVID, amongst other things. And so I'm also looking at uh, the projects and who have them, who have those projects in hand. And again, uh, the bottom line is that um, for the projects that are immediately on the delivery schedule to be delivered by March, those projects, those risks are being managed. Um, and so I can provide in a statement, Chairperson, that uh, the projects are on track for delivery by the end of this financial year. Um, we have already descoped and deferred the maintenance projects where we think uh, will need to be replanned and handed to contractors that are able to withstand some of the challenges we've got going on at the moment. Um, but hopefully that answers your question, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Abrams. Um, I'm just affording an opportunity for Member Broncos. Are you following up? Uh, thank you very much, Chair. A, a new question, uh, Chair. Continue. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair to the Department, if I can get an update on um, in the last uh, financial year, um, the department indicated there will be a, a project uh, uh, for da for the Darling uh, area that is in the Swartland uh, municipality. Uh, I just uh, uh, want to know if I can get an update on the, the Darling the Darling project. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, HG, Chairperson, <clears throat> uh, I in the last financial year, is there anybody on our line, um, either Erna or Mr. Abrams? Who can answer that? Darling project? I I can. I can use uh, his and two person. Shall I go continue, ahead? Continue, continue. Thank you. The 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 two parts to that answer. One is we've um, uh, prioritized uh, capital capital development projects, in other words, uh, building new schools and um, and the Swartland particularly, um, with Mauriceburg in flight, um, having been progressed. Darling is um, next in line, as it were, in the in the Swartland area. the The project is in the planning phase, um, Chairperson and Member Brinkes. Uh, what I mean is, um, there is an opportunity to repurpose a building, um, a hostel, as it were, uh, in the short term to be a new technical, uh, to be a new high school that might offer technical subjects, and it's a collaboration with the TVET. Um, in addition to that, um, we have um, sourced and worked with the local municipality on an alternative piece of ground. Um, so the planning of a high school in Darling um, is underway and we will, as per the procedures, run consultations with the local community on the exact timings and, and before we take that to tender, uh, definitely on the cards. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abrams. Will you also keep us in the loop in regard to Darling, please? Um, then I I just want to ask um, in regard to this morning we had DCAS in front of us and they have indicated that there is a holiday program they have 15 million um, set aside for a holiday program during the December January holiday period. I just wanted to check with you are some of our schools going to be utilized as these holiday centers within our districts. SG? 
So, uh, Chairperson, where that is possible and where it is going to happen in that way, I'm sure they will follow a process to be able to make sure that we have those schools open if it is required. Okay, thank you very much. Um, members, I am now checking with our procedural officer whether there are any members of the public on this platform who has indicated that they would want to pose a question or make submission in regard to this um, adjustment appropriation for vote five, Wasima? Chair, I receive no requests to be part of this meeting or to do any oral submissions. And I, as I'm looking at the participants, there are no members of the public in this meeting at present. Thank you very much for that update. I am now, Minister, going to go back to you and then the SG. Any um, last thoughts or closing remarks? Thank you, Chairperson. No, I think that's pretty much all said. And uh, thank you again for the engagement with the committee. And I suspect this will be our last one for the year. So I want to wish you all a hopefully a little bit of a break uh, over December and in the beginning of January. And at least the matric results this year will be a little bit later so we can have some holiday. So thank you so much to you and the, the committee. Thank you. Sorry, and also thank you to my team, of course. They are doing a phenomenal job. Uh, especially, I need to mention Ms. Feltman as, as far as the provincial uh, presidential um, employment initiative is concerned with Mr. Cronier of our people management practices, uh, who really have done absolutely outstanding work in, in ensuring that we did utilize as much of the money as we possibly could within the time we had. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, maybe just from my side, uh, Chairperson, to maybe just uh, thank the committee for the spirit of the engagement. And I think to give the committee the assurances that the department, its management, uh, led by the MEC, we always strive for our best to make sure that we get quality education uh, for every child in every classroom, in every school inside the province. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Minister and SG. And I think from our side and as the chairperson for the standing committee doing oversight of education, I wish to also say thank you very much for the year that is now behind us and for the engagements that we could have had with you, Minister, and the SG and your whole department. So thank you very much for that. And also from this committee to every teacher, class assistant, every principal in the province, Thank you for what you are doing in the classroom in every school to our learners. And I wish you well with the outcome of the matric results, Minister. We will wait anxiously for that. And I wish to um, thank uh, the committee as well. And please, please, Department, have a safe and um, have a safe and pleasant um, uh, festive period. And we shall see you in the next committee meeting, God willing, in January, February next year. Thanks. You may go offline now, Minister, and Thank HG you, and all the officials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Members, please stay behind to conclude. OK, I am taking any resolutions from um, this um, engagement. And then we will um, adopt the report for vote five um, to the Western Cape Adjustment Appropriation Bill. Nothing. Wasima, can you flight the report for us? Sure, Chair. Um, any second? Okay, members, I'm reading the report, committee report, report of the Standing Committee on Education on Vote 5, Education in the Schedule to the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill, B6 of 2021, dated 7 December 
2021 as follows. The Standing Committee on Education, having deliberated on the subject of Vote 5, Education in the Schedule to the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill, B6 of 2021, referred to the committee in accordance with Standing Rule 188 reports that it supports or not support the vote. Members, over to you. Chair, uh, Member Brunkes, I, I don't uh, I support the vote. Member Bosman first, Member Brunkes. I'll note you oh, after. Chair, I might like to move that we support the vote. Thank you very much, Member Brunkes. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Chair uh, Al Jama moves that uh, we don't support the vote. Um, Member Sayed. Member Christians, you were next. Uh, Chair, uh, I support, uh, support uh, the, the adjustment to propose. Thank you. Member Sayed, back to you. Chair, sorry, I was on mute. I didn't realize I was on mute. Um, I would like the viewpoint of the ANC to be recorded that we do not support uh, the vote. Thank you. Okay. Member Allen. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, I support. Um, and I'm happy to hear that other parties here, like the ACDP, is also supporting the vote. Okay. In regard to members with voting rights in this committee, it is the DA, the ANC, the um, ACDP, I am correct, Wasima, and not the Al Jamar, neither the EFF. Yes, ma'am. Um, Chair, the the other party is the ACDP that has voting right. Al Jama is an alternate member of the committee. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, so we will oh, just sorry, then. Sorry, Chair, doesn't, sorry, chair, doesn't the, the alternative member have voting rights? But, but um, we, it, what is the EFF, the alternate member? No, I am uh, Chair, the, the Al Jama member, um, Member Brankes. No, but you are. You will only have a voting right in the light of Member Christians being absent. Am I correct? Chair, may I come in here? Yes. Chair, in the event that Member Christians is not available in the meeting, the alternate member, Member Brankes from the Al Jama or Member um, Makama Boyka from the EFF, We'll take up that vote, but given the fact that Member Christians is in the meeting, um, he will take up that vote. Member um, Blancas' vote, he can note it in the minutes that he has also put in a vote that he does not support the, um, the bill. Yeah, we will record in the minute that he does not support as Al Jama. Yeah, but it does not, he does not have a vote. That's good, actually. Okay, all right. Uh, Member Brunkeis, you. You, yes, you understand that? I understand. Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thank you. Member Christians, Members Christians, and Member Allen, your hands uh, are still raised. No, no, uh, my hand is up, uh, Chair. Oh, okay, your hand is up. Uh, no, member, no, I don't uh, ask. Member Allen, Member Allen. Okay, so Member Christians, go ahead, please. No, uh, Chairperson, I just want to ask uh, the, the, the question, uh, you know, just the question. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that Al Jamar and the ANC want to send the money back for the wage negotiations and also the the assistance, the money that was given? So uh, I, I wonder, you know, uh, do they want us to return the money or what? Thank you, Chair. I, I think I think we're not going to um, deliberate on that now. A member said you're not going to answer that. I think no, member, I was just member, laugh. member uh, Christians, you. member Thank Christian you, needs to pose that. that. He needs to pose because, that in his speech in the house. Yes, I was going to say that you can pass in the <laughs> yeah. speech. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Member Christians. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so members, just coming back to our business, me um, reading the committee report. The committee report will then read as follow. Report of the Standing Committee on Education on Vote 5, Education in the Schedule to the Western Cape Adjustments, Appropriation Bill B6 of 2021, dated 7 December 2021, as follows the Standing Committee on Education, having deliberated on the subject of Vote 5, Education in the Schedule to the Western Cape 
Adjustments appropriation bill B6 of 2021 referred to the committee in accordance with standing rule 188 reports that it supports the vote. Uh, doesn't read correctly, Wasima. In accordance with standing rule 188 report that it supports vote. Thank you. In accordance with the stand with standing rule 90, the African National Congress express its minority view to not support the vote. Then we will record in the minute um, in regard to Al Jama as well as in regard to the ACDP members. That brings us to the end of our standing committee meeting. And if I have it correct, this will also be the last um, standing committee meeting. I note member Christians. Uh, Chair, sorry, this is not, um, it's just, uh, mm. uh, I can't remember when did we say, um, before we now, you know, we're not going to meet again. The yeah. Khravat report, when did we say uh, we are receiving that? I had another inquiry today and I said, I'll just ask when we're going to get that report. Uh, can, can, can the... Procedural officers tell us and uh, what was the time frame that we gave the department to reply on that because it's long outstanding chair. Thank you. We, we said before we rise and I think we gave the date as the 10th of December. Wasima, guide me. Chair, I will answer that now. I just want the members also to adopt the report that you just read out before we move on to the other part because you have read it out, but we haven't okay. adopted, please. All right. Okay. Member Bosman, you will... Chair, I um, move that we adopt the report. Thank you very much, Member Bosman. Can we have a seconder? I second, Chair, ACDP. Thank you very much. Our report is then, our committee report for this um, adjustment appropriation for vote five is then duly adopted. Can we get back to the date, Wasima? Um, yes, Chair, thank you. Um, I had written to them last week and they have asked for one or two days. I've given them until tomorrow to send that information through as I requested it before the members leave that we get it. That in order with you, Member Christians? Thank you very much, Shane. Thank you very much, uh, Procedural Offer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Members. It leaves in me to say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support throughout the year and also for your support through my difficulty during this year. And um, I want to um, say to you that please go and have a good break, and but have a safe break and have a good break with your families. I also want to bestow to our procedural officer, our senior procedural officer and our adopted um, procedural officer. I want to say thank you very much to you for your support and to our assistant procedural officer. I'm sorry, my apologies. Um, thank you very much for your support um, during this year. Um, and Siraj for IT assistance. Thank you. Members, we will see each other in the house. I think member Allen, I will still see in community safety year after. And then um, yeah, Member Allen, I will see you both in community safety and in health year after. So members, please, please, please go well. Thank you very much for your support. Um, the standing committee meeting is now adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you. Wasima. Thank you. Yes, Member Bosman, would you like to have a meeting after this? Where would you like to meet me? I'll call you into a meeting. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks, Siraj.